I'm Rayburn Johnson for Sample Library Review, and today I'm checking out the Baroque Bundle by Orchestral Tools. The Baroque Bundle takes Orchestral Tools period libraries, miroir, and Berlin harpsichords and immediately transports you back to the music of the Renaissance. With the stellar sampling we've come to expect from Orchestral Tools and the authenticity of the Baroque period, the Baroque Bundle will make you want to don a wig and strap on your square-toed shoes. The Baroque Bundle includes both Miroir and Berlin harpsichords. Both libraries work within the FreeSign player. Miroir includes 24 instruments and downloads as 33 gigabytes, while Berlin Harpsichords includes two instruments and downloads as 5.7 gigabytes. The Baroque Bundle is available from Orchestral Tools for €429. Euro. So today we're checking out the Baroque Bundle by Orchestral Tools, which includes two libraries, Berlin Harpsichords and Miroir, now, both of these libraries have been out before, but this is the first time that they've actually been brought together into a single bundle so that you really get that music of the Renaissance, that Baroque period in the early 17th century. When you think of composers such as Bach or Handel, um, this is really what that is all about. And it's dripping with authenticity. The harpsichords are just Beautiful. Mirwa is filled with so many great instruments, such as violins and violas that are very authentic, using things like gut strings and lower tunings. Um, you've got the basso continuo. You've got period woodwinds, which are just really, really beautiful, such as the Baroque oboe, the oboe d'amour, um, the oboe de Cassia. I mean, there's just so many really cool things, beautiful choirs. This is just a really great, great library. It is for a very specific use in that it's specifically geared towards Baroque music, but obviously the modern composer can fit these instruments in a plethora of different ways into their own um, tracks and compositions. And one of the things I really love are instruments such as, you know, the strings, the choir, the basso continuo, even though these are dripping with authenticity from that Baroque period, they really add another layer of tone and emotion to your tracks. And they give you a sound that you're just not going to find in other string libraries, other woodwind libraries, etc. So we're going to dive right into the bundle. We're actually first going to start with Miroir, which is the larger of the two um, instruments, the larger of the two libraries, I should say. And then we'll move into Berlin harpsichords. But with Miroir, you can actually see you have five different folders here. You have this inspirational combinations folder, which just gives you some really cool combinations that are kind of, you know, within one single articulation. You obviously have your strings, which we'll go over. You've got your, your basso continuo, your choir, and your individual woodwinds and brass. So we're just going to start at the very beginning. We won't touch everything, but hopefully this will give you a really good introduction to this bundle. And as you can see, first, we've got orchestral, the orchestra shorts loaded. So let's go ahead and start that. And you can see it's just one articulation, the staccatissimo. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Really, really cool. All right, let's go over to Passion. Really, really cool. And wind fanfares. Really cool. 
right, let's go to High Ensemble Ornaments. And let's jump down to Orchestra Mercado. And this has the Mercado Long articulation. That's regal and majestic and royal and all of those things. That's super. And the angel choir sustains. And the Lamento Ensemble. And let's jump down to the Christmas Oratorio. Let's go over to the second folder, which is the strings. And in the strings, you're going to see you have two different string ensembles within this library. Obviously, it's in the individual instruments. But if you think of it as, en as ensembles, you have the Baroque violins and the Baroque violas. And I'm telling you, these are just very authentic period instruments. The violins, for instance, are using gut strings. Um, in the second ensemble, you have a basso continuo, which means that you're playing with two cellos and a bassoon that are playing in unison, along with a contrabass that's playing an octave lower. Um, so very, very authentic. And even the tuning, these are actually even tuned a half step lower than normal. So, you know, normally you would tune at orchestra, orchestral pitch, which would be, you know, your A would be 440. But in this instance, we're doing A for 415 hertz, which that tuning actually means that this is about a half step lower. Obviously, they've corrected that so that you can match this up with other libraries, but it just adds a different kind of tone and dimension to the sound. So we're going to start out with the violins. Let's go ahead and load those up. We're going to load the entire set of violins with all the articulations. And one of the things, I, I love the sign player. It's just a super stable environment. Um, and I really enjoy the fact that you can customize it so much. So here I'm playing on a um, 61 note keyboard and I've been able to just, you know, quickly move my key switches up to where it fits my keyboard. So really, really cool. All right, let's go ahead and start with the sustains legato. Thank you. 
really beautiful. And we've got the sustains. They just, you can really, those gut strings, you can really hear the difference. There's just a, gosh, there's just like a, almost a, <laughs> I mean this in the best way possible. There's like a, almost a screechiness to the sound, which is just so indicative of that Baroque period. It just, it's like, it's almost a little bit out of tune, but it's not. I, I don't know. I love it. It's such a cool sound. All right. The sustained soft legato. Really cool. And the portado, let's actually just do a little legato and then we'll do the, the regular portado. And the regular portado. And we've got the Marcado short. And the Mercado Long. Oh, I just love that sound. And the Staccatos. And the Staccatissimo. And the Trims. And Trills. and the ornaments. I mean, that those strings just, whew. 
I can just imagine the thing about orchestral tools instruments. I got to say, orchestral tools is one of my absolutely favorite developers. And one of the things I love is their sampling methods are just so pristine. Their sound is just so excellent, and they just really translate the living instrument into a library that feels like that instrument to a point where when I play a library like this, like Miroir, normally from most developers, if I saw, oh, there's a Baroque bundle coming out, I wouldn't get that excited. As soon as the Baroque bundle came out, I knew it was something I wanted to play with, even though I don't play Baroque music. That's how orchestral tools works. They just draw you in and make you want to experiment. And by the time you get done, or at least me, by the time I get done playing with something like this, it makes me want to go write, you know, an album of Baroque music. <laughs> it's just so cool. All right, let's do the Baroque violas. Oh, I'm on the ornaments. Let's go back to the sustains. And the regular sustains without legato. And the sustained soft legato. And the regular sustained soft. The Portado Legato. And regular Portado. And Marcado Long. And let's jump down to the staccato. And the trims. And 
and the ornaments. Let's jump down to that. Just really, really nice. I love those. All right, let's do the Basso Continuo. And again, the Basso Continuo is a section that consists of two cellos and a bassoon playing in unison with a contrabass playing an octave lower. So that's normally accompanied in Baroque music by something like an organ. Um, but yeah, this is this is really, really nice. And you can find this with the violin and viola, and you can get a really very authentic period specific piece of music. So let's see here. Let's do the sustains and legato. I'm going to go down an octave. So nice. Gosh, that's a fantastic sound. And let's jump down to the portato. Actually, let's do the Portado Legato. And the Marcado Long. And let's do the staccato. and the ornaments. So good. All right, let's move along to the choir. And we have two choirs. We have a Baroque female choir and a Baroque male choir. So we're going to start with the female choir. And you can see you've got six different articulations, the sustains and legato, regular sustains. You've got syllables in long marcato, short syllables, and short time aligned syllables as well. This one's taken a little bit longer than most others to load.
that syllable's long is taking a long time. There we go. And the syllables long? And here, as I move around, it's changing syllables. Just listen to that. Really nice. All right, and let's do the male choir. And it looks like we have the same articulations in the male choir. And I guess the choir instruments seem to be the ones that are going to take the longest to load. I'm not sure if that's because they have the most samples or what, but... Now you can tell they, they definitely have a bigger RAM footprint. Still not anything extraordinary compared to a lot of other libraries. This library, though, I've just been really impressed with just how authentic the sound is. I mean, you can combine this to great effect. Really, between this and Berlin harpsichords, I really don't know if you even need another library to make Baroque music, to make authentic Baroque music from that period. I mean, it really is a self-contained bundle. All right, we've got the, the Mel Choir loaded. Let's start with the sustains in the legato.
really gorgeous. Just really gorgeous. All right. And last but not least in Miroir is we have the individual woodwinds. And I'm not going to go through all of these, but I do want to give you a sampling. For instance, with the Baroque flute, I'm just going to do the sustain patches with each, or excuse me, the legato sustains with each of these, just to give you a quick flavor of what each of these sound like. Really gorgeous instruments. And the oboe. And these are each just solo instruments, again, so not ensembles here. These are just very period-specific solo instruments. So here's the oboe d'amour in the legato. And then the oboe de Cassia, once again in the legato. And the alto recorder, or alto recorder. And now we move into the horns. So we're going to do the sustains here for the Baroque horn. Yeah. 
Yeah. So the horns here, you've got two solo horns and two solo trumpets that actually have different tunings. So again, they've tuned them to match your 440 pitch here, but they were recorded at a different tuning. So let's do the Baroque horn two. And finally, the trumpets. Let's do trumpet one first. and trumpet two. Just really, really gorgeous, wow. What an incredible library. Okay, let's go ahead and jump over to Berlin Harpsichords. And there's two different Harpsichords on offer here. So just to give you a quick, you know, uh, uh, just a quick little bit about the Harpsichord in case you're not familiar with it. It's actually the predecessor to the Grand Piano and the Piano in which, you know, it was created around the 14th century. And instead of actually using hammers to hit the strings like what you have in a piano, you actually have a plucking mechanism that raises that when you you know, push a key, it actually raises a lever that plucks a string or in some cases plucks multiple strings. The one thing you should realize though is that with the harpsichord, because of that, because you're not hitting at a different velocity necessarily, you really just have one dynamic layer. So that's reflected in the sampling that orchestral tools have done with this library. They're actually offering you two different harpsichords here. So there's the French harpsichord, which we'll look at first, which was modeled after an 18th century harpsichord. It's got two manuals. And in case you've not seen a harpsichord before, a manual is just, you know, a, basically a key bed. It's two different key beds that are stacked on top of each other. And the manuals control three different sets of strings. So the first manual has a set of four foot strings and the other, well, a set of four foot and eight foot strings. And then the second manual just has a single set of eight foot strings. So um, you can actually, with this harpsichord, the way they've sampled it, you can actually play those manuals individually. You can combine those manuals. So there's just a lot of opportunity here. Um, the front manual in this one has kind of a more delicate or pristine tone. And then the back manual or the back eight strings on the upper keyboard have got kind of a rounder and warmer tone. So that's reflected in the articulations you'll see here. And while I'm talking, I should have been <laughs> loading this. You can see this one loaded super duper fast. So in this first one, the, the two by eight patches, it's a combination of both of the string sets on both manuals played together. So it just kind of gives you, you know, a richer sound. And then you can see you've got the front eight and the back eight. And then we'll get into the harp stops, which are really just a set of felt blocks that dampen the string. So it's almost like a predecessor to the felt piano. Um, so let's go ahead and start with the sustains in the two by eight. Once again, that's the combination patch. And you'll have to forgive me because I'm not a Baroque player. I played Bach in piano lessons, but it's been a while. <laughs> so we're just gonna play around and see what we come up with.
So it's kind of quiet. I'm going to actually turn this up within the library itself. And I hope that makes sense for you guys because it is a quieter one. <laughs> Not perfect, but hey, what do you do? And I am turning that up, as you can see, just because it's kind of a quiet library. <laughs> so that's the staccato. And then we've got, so the sustains, this is, this is the combination patch. Excuse me. This was, I believe this is the four foot strings with the two, eight, eight foot, I believe up. Oh, I'm getting confused here. It's a little bit confusing. Oh, let me turn that up again. And let's jump down to the front eight here. And we've got the staccato in the front eight. and the sustains in the back eight manual. And let's jump down to the harp stop. And once again, that's that felt block, the set of felt blocks that dampen the strings. So let's see what that sounds like. and the staccato harp stop. And finally, you've got staccato effects here, which these are essentially where the strings are being hit instead of plucked. So it kind of gives you this percussive effect. It's very hard to hear right now. So let's move on to the Italian harpsichord. And the Italian harpsichord, this one's modeled after 
multiple originals. So it's got kind of a darker and rounder or warmer tone. It's a smaller instrument with just a single set, just one manual with two sets of eight foot strings. And, you know, just a little bit different from what you've heard in the French harpsichord. So let's go ahead and check this one out. Starting with the two by eight. It would help if I could play. Had my octave down. Let's try that again. And the staccato two by eight. And the sustains front eight. And the staccato front eight. And the sustains in the back eight. And the staccato in the back eight. And that, my friends, is Berlin Harpsichords played Fast and Furious. <laughs> the harpsichord is a very specific instrument for a very specific genre. So I, you know, I'm not quite sure that this instrument is going to be quite as flexible outside of that, you know, Baroque or Renaissance period musical landscape. Um, but it's definitely authentic to the actual sound of a real harpsichord. It is very authentic. Miroir, on the other hand, very much is, you know, in the pocket of Baroque music and very, you know, reminiscent of the Renaissance. And yet there's tons of flexibility for the modern composer to use outside of the Baroque musical landscape. I can see the strings especially being used. Well, not just the strings, really. The strings, the inspiration combinations, the basso continuo, the choir, the woodwinds, I can see all of this being used in a very modern context. So very flexible and yet very authentic when you really want that period sound. Really, really great bundle. Each instrument does come individual, Berlin harpsichords and miroir. But currently and just recently, orchestral tools have joined forces on those and put them together in a bundle. They fit nicely together in that same musical, you know, um, that same musical landscape. So obviously they belong together, but you can purchase them together or individually. Thanks for checking out the Baroque Bundle with me today. 
So what do you think? Are you a fan of the Baroque period? Do you envision yourself using these libraries to write your own piece of Baroque music? Or would you use them in a different way? Comment below and share your thoughts. Please like the video and share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel. Also, be sure to check out samplelibraryreview.com for more news and reviews and stay in the know about weekly sales via our weekly deal compressor.